yeah what was it like what was it about i mean i think it was a large part due to your father but what was like a large part of that mafia life that intrigued you to because i know you went to college your father wanted you to go to college and then you're kind of like well i kind of work with you now it's like so what was it yeah. that kind of intrigued you to not get a really a a, a nine-to-five college educated educated job and kind of work with your father that's a it's a great question um it's a very simple answer too um it wasn't the appeal of that life. It was the appeal of knowing that I can be with my dad every day. Mm. You know, if my dad, and I say this to a lot of people, if my dad would have been a plumber, I would have wanted to fix pipes. If he would have been a butcher, I would have wanted to cut meat up. Um, my dad just happened to be a gangster. And I knew how treacherous the life was, and I knew that you couldn't trust everybody. So my frame of thinking was is that if I follow you into this life, which is not what he wanted, um, I could be with you every day. And not only that, but I could be your guy. I could be your eyes and your ears when you're not around. I can hear what's going on. You know, my ear will always be to the ground. Um, so that was probably the most intriguing part for me. Um, yes, I did think that um, doing other things in life, making money, I always thought that it would be easier for me, obviously, if I had gotten involved in that life um, without thinking of, the people that I'm hurting in the process, you know? So yeah, you do see the nice cars. You do see the big houses. Um, you do see the respect. You do, do see being able to walk into a restaurant and it be packed, but hey, well, your table's over here, Junior. You know, it's those things. Yeah, they're appealing. They, they really are. Um, the women, um, when I was younger, women would just, gravitate to you because they knew you were involved in that life and, and that they wanted to be a part of it. It's, it's strange to me now mm. when I think about it, you know, mm. if you ask me, I don't see, you know, people will say, listen, the marble never die. Yeah, I get it. it it's not, but it is going to dwindle, you know, and the older guys that are still out there today, they're kind of stuck. You know, because you you have to start bringing in new blood and you have to trust somewhere along the line. you got to trust. And to this very fucking day, I still hate the phone. Like, I don't do a fucking thing wrong and I, I never would. Yeah. But I still don't talk on the phone. Like, people are still like, Bill, oh, you, you know, give me a holler back. I'm like, God. Don't get upset. I, I'm just not a phone person, you know, like you want to hang out anytime. You're more than welcome. We'll go do something. But chit chatting on the phone. It's just it's just not my. That thing. was like yeah. one of the, when, when we had the phone call prior, you know, you that was like one of the first things you're saying, like, man, is you know, not nothing against you. But he's like, you're like, I'm, I'm just not used to being on the phone. I don't really like talking <laughs> on the phone too much. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, it's all right. And we ended up talking for like 45 minutes anyway. But uh -huh. I, I get it. I get it. Oh, 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 oh,